How long do you plan to teach? Ooh, I like this one. How can I say it nicely? Did you get a job at a new school? I get this question all the time. Welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I opened up the comment section to you guys to ask me any kinds of questions you had, whether it was about teaching or about myself, and I told you I would be answering them in an upcoming video. I have not done a question and answer video since January, and I think at the time I had maybe like 5,000 subscribers, so I thought this would be a good time to do it since I'm very close to 50,000. Currently, I wanted to answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. You also will notice that I have Dunkin' Donuts, which I don't usually have when I'm filming, Billy was a deer and went out and got me coffee this morning. You all are always telling me that you sit down and watch my videos with a cup of coffee, so I thought it made sense that I have my favorite drink when I'm filming them. Now I'm literally just gonna sit here and read questions off the comment section on YouTube. I am gonna answer as many as I can, but I think there's over like 700 comments on this video, so I definitely can't get to all of them, and if I don't get to yours, I am sorry, but I am gonna try to answer the questions that I got asked most frequently. Okay, I got this question at least like 50 times. How long have you and Billy been together? Are you and Billy getting married? Are you and Billy having kids? Billy and I have been dating for almost four years now. We met at an ugly Christmas sweater party and we have been together ever since then. Yes, we do plan on getting married. Billy and I have talked about it and we do plan on getting engaged this fall. We're both very open with each other. It's something we've talked about. So yes, I do know that it is coming this fall. I know a lot of you guys were disappointed when I got back from my Europe trip because you thought I was gonna get engaged, but I knew that wasn't gonna happen. We've talked about it. We think this fall would be a good time and then we plan on getting married about a year after that. As for kids, yes at some point we will have kids but it's definitely not going to happen within the next couple years. We both are just not in a rush to have kids plus I have my kids in my classroom so I just don't really feel the need to be a parent right now. I don't feel like I am ready yet. Billy and I love to travel and we have a ton more places that we want to get to before we start a family. So yes, eventually we will have kids but do not expect that within the next like two or three years. I'm only a junior in high school and I really want to become a teacher and find the organization and all the work so interesting and it's what I love to do but my family thinks teachers make no money. Do you have any arguments that I could use to convince my parents that being a teacher rather than a doctor is worth not making six figure money? This one you guys, I feel on a personal level, I went through the exact same thing. I knew I wanted to be a teacher for years and when I would tell people that, Yes, all the time they would tell me, well, you know, you're not going to make good money or they would even tell me like you have a 4.2 GPA. Why do you want to be a teacher? You can be something so much better than that. And it honestly made me mad. And I think it still does to this day. The fact that people see teachers as like a low position just blows my mind because to me, it's one of the best, hardest, and most important careers out there that you could possibly choose. First of all, teachers are in it for the outcome, not the income. I'm sorry, yes, money is important, but money ultimately is not going to make you happy. So why would you pick a job that you're gonna hate doing and you're gonna dread going to work every day just to make a little bit more money? Like, I'm sorry, I just don't think it's worth it. Now, obviously, I think teachers deserve to be paid a lot more than what we do get paid, but at the same time, the pay, considering you're only working like nine 10 months of the year isn't as bad as what I think some people think. I think some people think that you are gonna be making like $10,000 a year. That's not the case. Like you can definitely live on a teacher's salary. You have to live within your means, you have to budget, and you may not be able to afford the nicest things in the world, at least for the first couple of years, but if you are happy and you enjoy going to work every day, like I just don't think it matters. And there are ways to make more money as a teacher. First of all, I had a summer job the past two years. During the summer, I worked as a receptionist at this company they were like a shuttle service they took people to the airport I worked that job in the summer to help make extra money this is actually the first summer where I'm not working another job but I'm making income through YouTube I'm making income through TPT I'm making income through Amazon like there are ways to make money as a teacher and I think people think if you are a teacher that you're gonna be poor your whole life and that's not the case so I'm sorry, but if someone tells you not to be a teacher because you're not gonna make great money, screw them, do what's gonna make you happy, and I promise you will be fine. Honestly, I think one of the biggest determinations for your success in life is going to be your work ethic. So even if you're not making a lot of money, I promise if you're working hard, you will find ways to make it work. My first year of teaching, yes, I was probably struggling financially. I didn't have a lot, but I worked my butt off. I built my own 
companies so that I can now support myself with or without teaching. What's your strangest or grossest experience in the classroom? Okay, for grossest, I mentioned that on the first day of teaching for me, I had a student throw up all over my feet. I also had a girl throw up all over my desk. Like I was standing there and she was sitting in front of my desk and projectile vomited all over everything. And that was disgusting because I had to sit there and clean all of the stuff because I wasn't gonna waste it and throw it away. Like it was expensive. It was my first year of teaching, so I didn't really have a ton of extra money. It was horrible. As for strangest, I had a girl my second year of teaching. I called her Hot Mess. Like that was her nickname because that was a perfect representation of her. But I loved her to death. Like she was just such a unique kid. And she used to write me notes all the time and I would write her notes and she would give me envelopes every day with little cards that she had made. Made. and one day she gave me an envelope and I opened it up and inside there was a picture of me and it was a picture of me from like high school like I have no idea how she got it it was a picture of like my yearbook picture from high school it was the weirdest thing and inside was a note and it said do you have a future I still don't know what she meant by that I never asked her about it because I think I was kind of scared to know the answer but yeah it was just really weird I worked in three different districts I noticed in each that when I went above and beyond my duties and showed a lot of enthusiasm, some of the other teachers would get jealous. Have you ever received any of this type of backlash from coworkers? If so, how did you handle it? Now, obviously I've only taught for three years. I never really got that at my past school or if I did, I totally wasn't aware of it. Honestly, my coworkers were all super supportive. Like I could not have been luckier with my coworkers. I love them to death. They were amazing. So I didn't experience that in teaching, but I know exactly what you mean. I know that that is a really big thing for teachers. And I definitely have gotten criticism and backlash like that from other experiences in my life. I have always been an overachiever my entire life. And I think some people take it the wrong way. Some people take it as you're doing it to make them look bad when in reality, at least in my case, you're doing it for you. Like you're doing it because it makes you happy. Honestly, if someone's giving you backlash for that, it's probably stemming from their jealousy. At least that's my opinion. There is a quote that I love and I keep this in mind all the time. People only hate you for one of three reasons. Number one, they hate themselves. Number two, they want to be you. Or number three, they are intimidated by you. If you are getting backlash for going above and beyond and for being enthusiastic, that falls on that person. It does not fall on you. That is an issue that they either have with themselves or they're jealous of you. Like it's not a bad thing. I know it can be really hard to deal with, but you have to do what's gonna make you happy. And honestly, as teachers, we need to stop comparing ourselves to other teachers. It's gotten so bad, especially with social media and we're so concerned with what another teacher is doing and figuring out if we're doing enough and it's just not necessary. I actually have a video on my channel where I talk a little bit more about this. I think it's called collaboration over competition or teaching is not a competition, something like that. So I definitely recommend you check that out. I was listening to a podcast recently and in the podcast they were talking about the quote, don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10, which basically means like don't compare yourself to someone else if they've been doing something a lot longer. But in reality, we can't can't compare each other at all because we're writing different books like you are not the same as anyone else so you need to do what makes you happy don't worry about anyone else I know it can be hard to deal with that criticism but I promise you you can find someone either in your school or if you don't have anyone in your school find another teacher on social media and build yourself a support system of teachers that are gonna build you up rather than tear you down how did you come up with the name pocket full of primary for your channel oh shoot Okay, that is a really good question and I wish I had a really good answer for it, but honestly the answer is kind of simple. So I started the name when I first started my teaching Instagram account my first year of teaching. I wanted to create a new Instagram so that I was not bothering all of my family and friends with all of my teaching posts. So I wanted to make an Instagram dedicated to teaching and I also knew I wanted to start a TPT store and I was just trying to come up with a name. I knew I liked alliterations and it was just something that came to me and I kept it in the back of my head. I tried to think of other names Names, but in the end I was like no that's the one I want and I just went with it so when I created my YouTube channel obviously I gave it the same name I know you were probably looking for some like really inspirational story of how I came up with the name but no like I just wanted something that started with the same letters <laughs> do you know any other languages other than English no and I really wish I did I will say I tried to teach myself Spanish I tried to teach myself French and it honestly is really hard so if you are someone who knows more than one language I have so much respect for you because it honestly is really difficult but I do think that more people need to know multiple languages I do think it's important Billy and I have talked about getting Rosetta Stone to teach ourselves 
but it's really expensive. Are you going to show your house before it is fully done? No, not really. I am trying to wait and do one video where my house looks perfect because I'm a perfectionist and I want that video for myself. Like, I think it'll be cool, Billy and I, like 10, 15, 20 years from now to look back on it and see like our first house together. I am showing little bits in my weekly vlogs, but no, I'm trying to wait and show you guys it all in one video. What type of job does your boyfriend have? Currently, he is still looking for a job. Hopefully, he will be working for State Farm. And I was looking at my last vlog, and some of you guys were saying, like, well, why did you move up there if he's not going to work in D.C.? Look. Where we were living before, Billy and I knew that we did not want to stay there. Billy had grown up there, I was only there for college, and it just wasn't the area that we wanted to live in permanently. We knew we wanted to be closer to DC. Whether Billy's working in DC or not, yes, ideally Billy wants to work in DC, but it's really hard for him to get a job in what he wants his first year out of college. It's going to be something that he kind of has to work into. He is going to work on getting his master's, so if he works at a place like State Farm while well, he gets his master's and then moves to the college side in DC that's completely okay with me he ultimately wants to run for office like that is his dream he is so into politics and honestly he's so knowledgeable about it and he would be really good at that he's very how can I say it nicely he's very good at trying to like convince people to think what he thinks like I honestly don't like arguing with him because he is really good at it and I always thought I was good at it and then I met him and honestly he's better than I am he wants to work on Capitol Hill and like I said he ultimately wants to run for office but he may not be able to do that for a couple more years and he needs to get his master's. So right now he's probably gonna work for like State Farm or some kind of job that's local while he's getting all of that done. How old are you? I am turning 24 in October. Do you ever cook and does your boyfriend cook? I know you guys see how often we eat out and I know you probably think it's horrible. I know it is. However, like real life, that's just what we're going through right now. We're both really, really busy and we're eating out a lot because we don't really have time to cook. So I promise within the next like couple months, we will be cooking more, but right now we're just both really busy. I cook a little bit, but honestly, Billy is a really, really good cook. So most of the time when we do eat at home, he does the cooking. I absolutely love him for that. I'm able to get work done while he is cooking and honestly, he enjoys it. And like I said, he is good at it. But right now we just haven't gone grocery shopping yet. Would you teach high school if you ever had the opportunity? I'm sorry, I just don't think I could ever teach high school. It's just not for me. I commend high school teachers. I think they're wonderful. It's just not my cup of tea. I do wanna clear something up though because I think some people are confused. I graduated with my major in elementary education and when I took my test for certification, I am certified to teach first grade through sixth grade. If I had wanted to teach middle school or high school, I would have had to major in a specific subject area and I would have had to take different certifications. So right now, even if I wanted to, no, I couldn't teach high school and middle school, I could only teach like sixth grade. So I am only teaching elementary school because that is what I got my certification in. How long do you plan to teach? This is a tricky question because I have no idea where my life is going to be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. So I feel like I could answer this and then completely change within the next couple of years because my first year of teaching, if you had asked me how long do you plan on teaching, I would have said, I plan on teaching until I retire. Since then, with me building my own business, I don't know how long I'm gonna be in the classroom for. And I love teaching. But I also love my business. I love TPT, I love YouTube. I love that it is something that I have completely built on my own. I am so proud of myself for that. And I love that I am in control of it all. Like I just, it's a dream come true for me. A dream that I didn't even really know that I had. Honestly, I see myself in the classroom for probably another two years, roughly. Um, I see myself in the classroom definitely until Billy and I get married because I need health insurance. And until Billy and I get married, I can't get on his health insurance. So I definitely am gonna see in the classroom for the next like two, well, I can't say definitely because I really don't know. <laughs> I most likely will be in the classroom for at least two more years. After that, honestly, I do see myself more exploring the entrepreneurial side of what I've been doing with my own business. I love teaching and I would be happy teaching the rest of my life, but I do think that me running my TPT store and me running YouTube has made me happier than I thought I could be. I had no idea I was going to enjoy this so much. So now that I have found that, I definitely want to explore that more and just put more time and effort into it and see where it takes me. Any tips for tricky parents? 
I honestly haven't had a lot of issues with parents because at my school they weren't overly involved. Like there were a couple parents each year that were really, really helpful and really involved, but most of them, I honestly would never even meet some of the parents of my kids throughout the entire school year. Your first year of teaching can definitely be difficult with parents if you are young because a lot of them don't really trust you, at least in my experience, and it kind of sucked. I had kids that were getting transferred out of my class because their parents didn't want them with a new teacher, which to me makes no sense because I'm young, I'm fresh out of college, I have energy, I don't have a family yet, I'm willing to put in my entire life into teaching. But nonetheless, everyone is different, so to each his own. I definitely faced a lot of criticism my first year, and I can completely understand it because looking back on it, I didn't know what I was doing, so the parents probably were right to question me. I did face some criticism my first year of teaching with just parents questioning what I was doing and all that kind of stuff. I think that's completely normal. Since then, I honestly haven't really dealt with that. I will say that communication is key. Make sure you communicate with your parents regularly and make sure you build a relationship with them from the very first day of school, if not before then. I always make sure I reach out to all of my parents within the first week of school just to start to build that relationship with them and I make sure that I maintain that relationship throughout the school year. I do think that that makes it much, much easier if you have to have a conference with the parent and you have to discuss the child's behavior or their academics or anything, if the parent trust you, they're gonna be a lot more open to what you have to say. And honestly, do you. Teach the way you know is going to be best for the students. You may have parents questioning you and criticizing you at first, but I promise if they can see the growth and they can see how much their child is achieving, they will learn to trust you. I had the questions and the criticism my first year of teaching, but suddenly my second and third year of teaching, I had parents contacting me saying they were requesting me as their child's teacher. So it may be hard at first, but I promise you, if you were doing a good job, they will start to realize that. What courses do you have to take to become a teacher? That question honestly is really hard to answer because every college is different and every college has you take different courses and they have you do different classroom experiences and internships and all that. So I really can't answer that for you but I promise if you are in high school or even younger than that, don't worry about what classes you have to take and all that. When the time comes, it will all be laid out for you and I promise it will work out just fine. What are the qualifications to become an elementary teacher? That is really hard to answer again because guys, every state is different and even every country is different. So look up your state and look up teaching qualifications and I promise you can find it all outlined for you. Some states require you to have your master's before you start teaching. Some don't require you to get your master's at all. Personally, in Maryland, you have to get your master's within your first 10 years in order to keep your certificate. Any tips, suggestions, and ideas in order to make a successful social media presence slash TPT store? It takes time. That's definitely the most important thing to know going into it. When I first made my teaching Instagram, and that was in like March, I guess, of my first year of teaching, it took me until the next January to hit a thousand followers. After that, I quickly jumped to like 5,000 and then just in the past couple months, I've gone from like 10,000 to almost 30,000 on Instagram. So it really does just take time. It also takes consistency. Make sure that you are posting consistently and honestly, I'm not the best example of this because on Instagram, I get busy and I'll forget to post for a couple days. But I will say that when I am consistent and I'm posting two times a day, every single day of the week, I will gain a lot more followers. Also make sure you are engaging with your following and again, probably not the best example of this because I've gotten super busy and I haven't been able to respond to all of my messages and comments but when you do respond to people and you engage with them they're a lot more likely to follow you and continue following you and supporting you for TPT kind of the same thing it definitely takes time but I promise if you are putting out good products you will gain a following it just takes time but as you start to build your presence on Instagram it definitely will help your TPT store and as you build it on Facebook or YouTube or what other platforms you are using they will all start to grow but don't expect it to happen fast it took me several years to get to where I am now what would you say is your favorite subject to teach and why I know this isn't gonna make a lot of sense but my favorite subject to teach is also the subject I find hardest to teach and for me that is math I absolutely love math and I think the reason I love to teach it so much is because a lot of people don't like math and I want to make my students love math as much as I do and I think the key to that is just having a really good understanding which comes from really good instruction. When you use a lot of manipulatives and you explain things in different ways and you have hands-on meaningful activities for your students and they understand math better, they learn to love it a lot more and that's really what I want for my students. Especially my girls. I want my girls to love math because I think 
girls growing up, at least in my case, you're told that you're not good at math. Boys are good at math and science and girls are good at like literature. And that's what I grew up always hearing. But you know what? I was good at math and I was a math minor in college and I took an advanced level math course and I was in the class with all boys. And you know what? I was doing better than all of them. So I want to make sure that the girls that I'm teaching have confidence and they know that they can be good at math. They just have to take time to understand it. But the reason it is probably the hardest subject for me to teach is the fact that math has always come really easy for me. And I've always understood things with math the first time it's given to me. Like I don't have to see it different ways in order to get it. And that kind of puts a hindrance on my teaching because I have really had to learn different strategies and different ways to approach problems to show my students in order to make sure that they all understand it. Would you ever teach another grade level besides... <gasps> Would you ever teach another grade level besides second grade? Absolutely. Now, second grade is my favorite grade level and it is a grade level I would like to stick with, but I am completely flexible. Honestly, it would be beneficial to teach other grade levels because you get to see kind of the student's understanding at that grade level and how it impacts their understanding at the next grade level and how the instruction all kind of fits together. And honestly, like if I could go down and teach first grade, I would have a lot of experience knowing what my students struggled with in second grade and I could help build a better foundation for the students in first grade to try to prevent that from happening. Do you think teaching is easy after what you have been through over the years? No, teaching is not easy. I will never say teaching is easy. And honestly, people who think teaching is easy probably have never been a teacher. What are your favorite teacher lunch ideas? I actually answered this question in my I Teach 2 tag video, which is a couple videos back. I will link it for you guys down in the description because I do talk about that in that video. What are your favorite places to buy affordable yet professional looking teacher clothes? That is a really good question. Now, I definitely do not have the most professional looking teaching clothes. I like to be comfortable. I like simple outfits. I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. That's why when you guys tell me to do a video on like teacher fashion, I'm like, I'm the last person you should ever ask because I have the most basic pieces and I really don't put a lot of effort into like my clothes. I'm sorry, I just don't. I will say I really like J. Crew but they are expensive. Now, Billy actually worked at a J. Crew for a while, so any of the J. Crew clothes that I do have are because he got them for me on a really big discount. I do really like Kohl's. They have a fair amount of professional clothes. I only ever go there when I have a 30% off coupon, but you definitely can find a lot of really cute things there. Target also has a pretty nice, like, little professional type section for women. I wear a lot of maxi skirts, plain t-shirts, and cardigans because it's simple and it's comfortable and it's somewhat professional looking. I will get my maxi skirts from Kohl's or Target. Now I am on the short side. I'm only like 5'3", so I have to pull my maxi skirts up a lot so that they don't hang down really low. Someone asked me that in one of my other videos. So yes, maxi skirts are kind of hard for me to find because they're usually really long. I just pull them up or like roll them down and then I get plain t-shirts from like Target and I will get cardigans from either Target or J. Crew. What was your favorite class in college and why? One of the classes we had to take in our undergraduate program for elementary education was creative arts and I absolutely loved that class. The professor I had, Dr. Terrell, was amazing and the class was mostly about how you could integrate the arts into other subjects. So visual arts, theater, music, dance, and we learned all about easy ways to incorporate that into our lessons and how it doesn't have to be something that's time consuming, you can incorporate it honestly with less planning than some other lessons. So I loved that class. It got me a lot of really good ideas. And honestly, I just enjoyed that we got to be really creative in that class. Where did you start buying supplies, storage containers and decor included for your first year of teaching? I got a lot of stuff from Dollar Tree and I do still buy things from Dollar Tree. You can find really durable storage containers there. You guys know I love the little snack containers. I use them for crayons and cards. And so so many other things they hold up exceptionally well I also got some like not book bins but like containers that I use to hold books in my library from Dollar Tree some of them are durable but a lot of them will end up breaking I know your first year of teaching you don't have a lot of money to invest but I absolutely have learned that when you invest in more durable things they're gonna last for much longer and in the long run it does end up saving you money I can make a whole video on this but I would say for your first year of teaching there are things you want to splurge on and then there are things that you want to save on one thing I would splurge on are nice containers to hold library books because no matter what grade level you teach you're gonna have a classroom library or at least you should have a classroom library 
library and you are gonna want bins that hold up for years and years and years. Don't get bins that are gonna break within the year and you're gonna have to replace them. You're better off to spend three, four, five dollars per bin and have it last for several years as opposed to getting one for one dollar and having to replace it every year. As for decor, I honestly didn't buy a lot of decor. Most of the time you get that from teacher stores and those are super, super expensive. Now, when I first started teaching my first year, the Target Dollar Spot did not have as much classroom stuff as it does now. So Target is definitely a great place to get affordable classroom decor. Personally, I printed off a lot of mine. I made it or I got it from TPT, printed it, laminated it, and used that as my decor. What tips do you have for balancing time? I know you work out. How do you balance this when school starts back up? I am an imperfect human being. There are times where I am really, really good and I go to the gym for two hours every single day. And then there are times where I don't go to the gym for two weeks. And honestly, to me, that means balance. And that's kind of the thing. Balance means different things to different people. Personally, I don't feel the need to go to the gym every single day in order to have balance. There are weeks where school is gonna take more of a priority, weeks when grades are due and we have back to school night PTA meetings. And then there are weeks where I can focus more on the gym because that's just the way the week works out. Plus, everyone is different. So like I said, balancing means different things to different people. There are people who would have to go to the gym every single day in order to feel balanced in their life. And then there's people who may never have to go to the gym in order to feel balanced because we all need different things and that's completely okay. I will say that one way to motivate yourself to work out or make sure that you get to the gym if you are making that a priority is bring a bag of clothes, change before you leave school, go to the gym on the way home because at least for me, if I go home, I'm probably not gonna go back out for the gym. So I make sure I hit it on my way home. Also, find a workout partner. Personally, Billy and I always work out together. We do the same things, so we always go to the gym together, and that definitely is a big motivator for me. But at the end of the day, if I can't make it to the gym that night because I'm too busy and I'm stressed or whatever, it's not a big deal to me. Like, it's okay to miss it every once in a while. Now, currently, I'm not training for any competitions or races or anything like that, so I'm allowing myself to be more flexible. If I'm training for a race or I'm training for some kind of competition, I have to be more rigorous and that's okay because that's to meet my goals that I have at that time. So it definitely depends on what your current fitness goals are and what balance means to you. Do you get nervous when it comes to teaching? That's an interesting question because actually I do sometimes. If it's just me in front of my students, I'm fine. I never get nervous in front of them. But if there's another adult in the room, whether it's a parent volunteer or even an assistant or an observation and it's like admin in my room, Yes, I get nervous and it's weird to me because I've told you guys I'm an introvert, but I'm not introverted in front of my kids. I'm introverted in front of other adults and I think it's somewhat out of like fear of judgment. I will say it's gotten a lot better. I remember my first year of teaching like sitting down and doing a read aloud with my kids always made me really nervous, but now it's my favorite thing to do. I love reading aloud to my kids. It definitely just took practice and the more I do it, the more comfortable I feel, the more confident I feel in my teaching abilities and the less nervous I have gotten. But yes, at the beginning, that was definitely a problem for me. Do you know of any teacher discounts? Yes, I do. My favorite place to go and use my teacher discount is definitely Michael's. They give you 15% off. Most of the time they require you to show your ID. So I try to remember to keep it in my purse or have a picture of it on my phone, but sometimes they are flexible and they'll just give it to you regardless. Also Barnes and Noble gives teacher discounts. You do have to get an educator card, which it's free to apply for. And then you get 20% off and up to 25% off when they do their teacher appreciation sales. Joanne Fabrics also does 15% off for teachers. Staples does some kind of teacher rewards program, but honestly, I don't really go there very often because they are really expensive, so I'm not sure exactly what it is. There also are several clothing stores that do gift discounts. The one I use most often is J. Crew. They get 15% off. There also are a lot of places that give teacher discounts during like certain times of the year. If you guys Google teacher discounts, you can find like an entire list because some of the places I'm not really familiar with because there's not any around me, so definitely Google it find things that are in your area that would offer teacher discounts. What made you want to start YouTube? I'm thinking about starting a channel myself. Any tips? Go for it. Just go for it. Push yourself out there. I promise you, you won't regret it. The reason I started with YouTube is because I've always been interested in film and editing. It's always been something that I enjoyed. I actually previously ran a YouTube channel for fitness, which looking back on it, it was absolutely horrible. I thought it was so clever at the 
the time, I called my channel My Weekly Fitness, which abbreviated was MWF, so I posted three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday was Munchie Monday, and I would share recipes. Wednesday was Workout Wednesday, and I would share workouts, and I don't remember what Friday was, but it was absolutely horrible. I was literally filming it with the, <laughs> with the webcam on my MacBook Pro. Like the quality was horrible. Don't even try to look for them because I've already deleted them. So once I started teaching and I had started my Instagram and I had started my TPT store, I knew I kind of wanted to get into video and I knew I wanted it to be on YouTube because what I love about YouTube is free content. You can look up how to do anything on YouTube and you can find a video that tells you how to do it. And I think teachers deserve that. Like they deserve that free content because I could put up my videos on TPT and I could sell them, but I just don't feel right doing that. I love the free content that comes with YouTube. As for advice, just do it. Put yourself out there, put up a video. It doesn't have to be the best quality. You don't have to have the best equipment. Just get your ideas out there and your channel will grow in time. When I go back and watch my first video on this channel, like I seriously want to vomit because it's so bad, but I promise you will get better at it as you go. You just have to put yourself out there and go for it. Is the hair color you have right now your natural hair color. I have highlights in my hair and I'm gonna tell you guys kind of a funny story. Growing up I was never allowed to dye my hair or color my hair or highlight my hair or anything. So when I went off to college and I was finally like free out of my parents house, I dyed my hair really really dark like it was almost black. I will insert a picture. I'm going to regret it, but I will insert a picture for you guys. It was horrible. I had it for like a couple months and then I didn't really like it anymore. So I got my hair dyed a closer color to my natural hair color, but it was like almost like a reddish color, like an auburn kind of color. And that was okay. I had that for a while. And then I grew my hair out and grew all of the color and got it cut so that I had my complete natural color again. I grew that out. I like to donate my hair so I'll grow it out really, really long. So about two years ago, my hair was literally like down to my hips. I cut off 18 inches, I think it was. It was a ridiculous amount of hair and that's why my hair is shorter now. I'm growing it back out and I will donate it again. So this past time when I got it cut after donating it, I did get highlights in. So right now I get highlights done about twice a year. I know nothing about like hair or hair color or highlights or anything. When I go, I just tell them I want like a golden blonde kind of color and this is what I get. Ooh, I like this one. Where do you see yourself personally and professionally five years from now, 10 years, etc.? I love this question because I think it will be interesting five, 10 years from now to look back on this video and see where I thought I was going to be and compare it to where I actually am. Honestly, five years ago, if you had asked me where I thought I would be today, I never in a million years would have thought this. I never would have thought I had my own business. I never would have thought I had my own YouTube channel. I never would have guessed any of that. So I'm amazed to see where I am and I'm super proud of myself for that. Now, five years from now, I will be how old? I'm turning 24, so I will be almost 29. Five years from now, I will be married to Billy. I will probably have one, maybe two kids by then, probably only one. I will have my master's, hopefully, within the next five years. I will probably no longer be teaching. I will most likely be doing this. I will be running my own business and I will be making curriculum and I will maybe be providing like professional development courses. I definitely want to grow my business. So five years from now, I hope that that will be my full-time job. Billy and I actually want to build our own house. We plan on living here in this townhouse for about four years and then we want to build our own house to live in. So hopefully at that time, I will be in a house that I completely designed on my own. Well, with Billy. <laughs> now, 10 years from now, I will be almost 34. That's really scary to think about. <laughs> at that point, I do hope that I will have a family. So honestly, my focus will probably have shifted a little bit. I do want to continue creating educational resources and creating curriculum and all that but I probably won't be putting as much time into it as I am right now because right now I don't have a family and at that point I will have a family and I want that to be my focus. Who is your favorite YouTuber? I mostly watch fitness videos on YouTube. It's just personally what I enjoy, but then I also have times where I randomly start watching videos and I click videos on the side and all of a sudden I'm watching like a video on building a tiny house and just these random things. My favorite YouTuber, her name is Randy Kennedy and she's just a super sweet girl. I mean, I've never met her, but from YouTube, she seems like a super sweet girl. She does a lot of like bodybuilding stuff and she lives in Canada and she just has such an amazing personality. Like I strive to be just like her. She's so positive and like, I just, I want to be that. And her channel has so much content and that's what I love. Like she has 
stuff about nutrition, she has stuff about workouts, and that's what I want my channel to be, only for teaching. I want to give you guys information that you can use in your own lives. Did you get a job at a new school? I wanna make it all like suspenseful for you guys, but no, I have not gotten hired yet. I do, however, have a small lead on a job. I don't wanna like jinx myself, so I'm not gonna give you guys too much information, but I potentially might have a job. There is a girl who I went to college with when I did my internship. She was placed in that same class for one of the lower blocks where she was just teaching one or two lessons. So we knew each other from that. She saw I moved to this area. She asked if I had a job, I said no. Her school is hiring, so long story short, she sent my resume to her principal. Principal is currently on vacation, hopefully will be getting in contact with me. I would absolutely love to work there. Everything I've looked up about this school just looks amazing, so fingers crossed that it does end up working out, but no, currently I do not have a job yet. What is your favorite lift? I like this because it's fitness related. Okay, you guys may remember from my vlogs, I talked about potentially doing a powerlifting meet. That since has not happened because I got so busy with YouTube and all that, which I'm completely okay with. Everything happens for a reason. I do really, really like the powerlifting moves. So squat, bench press, and deadlift. I would say my favorite lift, honestly, it's whatever I'm currently improving at. I feel like when I'm doing something and I'm getting better at it, I seem to really enjoy it. For a while, that was squat for me. I got up to like 225 pounds for squat and I was super proud of myself. So that was my favorite lift. Now I have not squatted in like two months. Actually, Billy and I squatted just the other day and my legs are so sore, like I can barely walk. So currently I would say, I don't know, maybe deadlift. Like I feel like I didn't lose a lot of strength in deadlift. I can still deadlift close to what I was deadlifting before but it totally depends on whatever I'm getting better at. If you were not a teacher, what would you be doing for your job? I would be a graphic designer. I talked about this in one of my previous videos, but yes, I would definitely do something with graphic design. I love graphic design. I took classes in high school and loved it, and that's kind of what I'm doing now, a little bit with TPT. Like, I don't consider myself a graphic designer because I'm not that knowledgeable. I'm just kind of figuring stuff out as I go, but I would love to get more information on that, and I would definitely do that as a career if I was not teaching. How do you motivate yourself to wake up early during the school year. I don't. I hate waking up early. I am miserable. I am not a morning person. I'm grumpy in the morning until I've had my coffee. Like, just don't talk to me. I'm just a night owl and I've accepted it. I've tried to kind of transition myself to be a morning person, but it just doesn't work like that. And I'm okay with that. I like to be up late at night. It's just how I function best. So honestly, I drink a lot of coffee and I do try to turn electronics off about an hour before I'm going to go to bed. But honestly, that doesn't always really happen so I haven't really figured it out yet. How were you able to graduate college in three years? I get this question all the time. I get this question all the time. So going into college, I already had 20 credits from AP classes that I took during high school. So I basically already had a semester done. Then I also took summer classes while I was in college. I took an English class during the summer. I took a history class during the summer. I even took a gym class during the summer online, which I know that sounds really weird, taking a gym class online, but I had a heart rate monitor. It was all good. I also took really heavy course loads during each semester. I had both a major and a minor, so I did have some extra classes that I had to take. And each semester, I was typically taking between like 18 and 20 credits. It wasn't really something I had to get like permission for from my college. Like you just had to complete your credits and once you did that, you were done. So I was able to get all of my credits in within three years. Plus it was a great way to try to save money. Was there ever a point in your career where you felt like just giving up and how did you get past it? Yes, there have been moments in my career where I said to myself, I don't want to teach anymore. It's too hard. I'm too stressed out. I'm not having fun. Yes, I have been there. I honestly think it's pretty common for teachers to feel like that, at least at some point. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Me feeling like I want to give up teaching doesn't mean I don't love my job. It doesn't mean I don't love my kids, but it means that I'm a human being. We get stressed out. We get overworked. We get burnt out. And yes, there are times where we're questioning our career choice. As for how to get past it, set time aside for yourself. That is so important and that is definitely something I've learned within my three years. You have to spend time on yourself so you don't get burnt out. Also, find a support system. Find teachers that you can rant to, that will build you up, and that will support you, and that will 
give you confidence that you are in this career for a reason. So whether that is someone you know personally, whether it's a teacher on social media, whether it's a teacher on YouTube, find that person who makes you just want to go out and teach because they inspire you and they motivate you. Find that person, watch them or listen to them or talk to them or message them or whatever religiously so that you get that motivation that you need. It's okay to be stressed. It's okay to be overworked and admit that you're struggling. It's okay to reach out and ask for help if you need it, but it's not okay just to give up. Find that source of inspiration, find that source of motivation, find that person that is going to support you 100% because you do not want to give up the most rewarding career out there. I'm gonna go ahead and end it there. Hopefully I did answer your question. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but I will do more question answer videos in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You guys know the drill. Don't forget to subscribe to me so you don't miss any future videos. Billy is actually going to be in my next video with me. We are gonna do a boyfriend tag video because you guys are starting to see him more in my vlogs and I just thought it would be cool for you guys to see a little bit more about our relationship but until then thank you for watching I love you all so much and I'll catch you in the next one thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and for supporting my youtube channel if you want to check out any of my older videos you can use the two links right down here if you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos you can use the link right up here the links to all of my social media sites my teachers pay teacher store and my amazon store are down in the description box for you and I will catch you guys in the next one